Hey there, third graders. Welcome back for chapter nine of Winn-Dixie. So we learned in the last chapter, we had Opal getting herself a job at the pet store. Um, and uh, clearly Winn-Dixie is winning over the hearts of almost everybody in town. She's helped, uh, he's helped her get a job. He also helped her get her first party invitation and made a new friend who is Miss Franny at the um, library. So let's see what happens in chapter nine. Chapter nine. Just about everything that happened to me that summer happened because of Winn-Dixie. For instance, without him, I never would have met Gloria Dump. He was the one who introduced us. What happened was this. I was riding my bike home from Gertrude's Pets and Winn-Dixie was running along beside me. We went past Dunlap and Stevie Dewberry's house. And when Dunlap and Stevie saw me, they got on their bikes and started following me. They wouldn't ride with me. They just rode behind me and whispered things that I couldn't hear. Neither one of them had any hair on his head because their mama shaved their heads every week during the summer because of one of because of the one time Dunlap got fleas in his hair from their cat Sadie. And now they look like two identical bald-headed babies, even though they weren't twins. Dunlap was 10 years old like me, and Stevie was nine and tall for his age. I can hear you, I hollered back at them. I can hear what you're saying, but I couldn't. When Dixie started to race way ahead of me. You better watch out, Dunlap hollered. That dog is headed right for the witch's house. Win Dixie, I called, but he kept on going faster and hopped over a gate and went into the most overgrown jungle of a yard that I had ever seen. You better get your dog out of there, Dunlap said. The witch will eat the dog, Stevie said. Shut up, I told them. I got off my bike and went to the gate and hollered. Win Dixie, you better come out. You better come on out of there. But he didn't. She's probably eating him right now, Stevie said. He and Dunlap were standing behind me. She eats dogs all the time. Get lost, you bald-headed babies, I said. Hey, said Dunlap, that ain't a very nice way for a preacher's daughter to talk. He and Stevie backed off a little. I stood there and thought for a minute. I finally decided that I was more afraid of losing Winn-Dixie than I was of having to deal with a dog-eating witch, so I went through the gate and into the yard. That witch is going to eat the dog for dinner and you for dessert, Stevie said. We'll tell the preacher what happened to you, Dunlap shouted after me. By then, I was deep in the jungle. There was every kind of thing growing there. There were flowers and vegetables and trees and vines. When Dixie, I said, heh, 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 I heard. This dog sure likes to eat. I went around a really big tree all covered in moss, and there was Win Dixie. He was eating something right out of the witch's hand. She looked up at me. This dog sure likes peanut butter, she says. You can always tr to trust a dog that likes peanut butter. She was old with crinkly brown skin. She had on a big floppy hat with flowers all over it, and she didn't have any teeth. But she didn't look like a witch. She looked nice, and Win dixie liked her. I could tell. I'm sorry he got in your garden, I said. You ain't gotta be sorry, she said. I enjoy a little company. My name's Opal, I told her. My name's Gloria Dump, she says. Ain't that a terrible last name? Dump? My last name is Baloney, I said. Sometimes the kids at school back home in Waitley called me lunch meat. Ha! Gloria Dump laughed. What about this dog? What do you call him? Win Dixie, I said. Win Dixie thumped his tail on the ground. He tried smiling, but it was hard with his mouth all full of peanut butter. Win Dixie, Gloria Dump said. You mean like the grocery store? Yes, ma'am, I said. Whoo-wee, she said. That takes the strange name prize, don't it? Yes, ma'am, I said. I was just fixing to make myself a peanut butter sandwich, she said. You want one, too? All right, I said. Yes, please. Go on and sit down, she said, pointing at a lawn chair with the back all busted out of it. But sit down careful. I sat down careful, and Gloria Dump made me a peanut butter sandwich on white bread. Then she made one for herself, and I put her false teeth, and she put her false teeth in to eat it. When she was done, she said to me, You know, my eyes ain't too ain't too good at all. I can't see nothing but the general shapes of things, so I gotta rely on my heart. Why don't you go on and tell me everything about yourself, so as I can see you with my heart? And because when Dixie was looking up at her like she was the best thing he had ever seen, and because the peanut butter sandwich had been so good, and because I had been waiting for a long time to tell some person everything about me, I did. 
All right, my friends, I will see you tomorrow for chapter 10, and we'll learn a little more about her and Gloria Dump.